you know, I was watching something the other day on an interview on MMA Junkie, who I really read all their interviews. And it had to do with uh, Khabib fighting McGregor. And McGregor saying he wants him or something. And he told him, he goes, hey, man, not for nothing. You lost your last two or three fights. Right. Why are you fucking, you have no room to speak. You know, he wasn't being, and I looked at that and I'm like, he's not being a bad person. One, he's saying the truth. And two, he's like, I'm not going to fight. You could fight the winner of Dustin and me. You know, you could that you lost your last two fights. I beat you. I choked you out decisively. You know, that must have controlled. If you watch the McGregor fights when he lost, he sat on the mat for a minute. And you think about it, especially the Khabib one. He sat on the mat for a few minutes and thought about where he went wrong, the training. And I'm not putting down McGregor or nothing like this. I'm just saying that sometimes that ego. Right now, McGregor hasn't fought in how long? Close to a year, probably. Okay. You know what? Ha it's like you not getting on stage for a year. It's like you doing three big fucking Academy Award winner movies, but you don't get on stage for a year. Eric Roach is going to pass you by. Christy Bellich is going to pass you by. The chick with the ass that travels all the time is going to pass you by. These people are going to pass you by. And, and, and now, you know, ego makes you do all those bad decisions. Ego makes you say all those things. And at the end, what did you make? What did you get? Nothing. What did you gain? The UFC is still going. They're still doing their fights. And they're adjusting without Conor. And they're waiting for him to come back. And he's going to be a year, to 16 months behind not getting in the fucking ring. You know? Uh, last two weeks ago, three weeks ago, uh, there was a big article and people were furious. I mean, I read thousand different reviews on... Eddie Murphy, you know, Netflix thinks he's worth $70 million. I love Eddie Murphy. I wouldn't be sitting in this chair if it wasn't for Eddie Murphy. Delirious is a great fucking special. Raw is a great fucking special. But people are wondering how much now. Eddie Murphy has not agreed to it yet. I love Eddie because of that. Now, if you watch Eddie and getting coffee with Getting yeah with Seinfeld. With getting, Seinfeld, yeah. they discuss that. Mm -hmm. Listen to what he's saying. That he hates going on stage without not saying something. This is a guy that has made twenty great movies that has been around since nineteen eighty three. What's that? Ninety three, two thousand three. This is a guy that's got a thirty seven year career as a fucking comic and as a comedic actor. Any other person who would get a $70 million offer already would have signed up and fucking the date would have been set, the dates would have been released. But what did he say on that thing with, with, with Seinfeld? He goes, to fucking get on stage, you got to work out. I, I, I watched part of it. I must he have goes, that I part. got nothing to say. He really said that? Wow. Yeah, he, he goes, I really can't get on stage without having something to say. It made me respect Eddie Murphy more than I've ever respected him. Because any other asshole, you know what? And I've heard it before. Agents go, hey, take the 70 million. You could talk shit for an hour. Right, yeah. That's, I mean, that that's that's a level of non-ego. Because, I mean, well, what, what would you do if they offered you 7 million? Like, that's like. <laughs> 7 million? I'd agree to it. But first off, if you offer me $7 million, it's August, so it would be 12. I would have to shoot it in January of 2021 if you offer me $7 million. I would start from scratch. Uh, whatever deposit they gave me, I would hire Neil Brennan, John Mulaney, Whitney Cummings. I would hire uh, anybody who's a great writer to just, I'd pay them, uh, I'd pull a Chris Rock. I think Chris Rock was another thing years ago where there was no ego. He went back to his friends. That's why I love Chris Rock. He got, a, I think, a quarter of a million in advance. He gave Richard Jenny 50, Louis C.K. 50, and Nick DiPaolo 50 and said, help me with my special. Everybody show up with 15 minutes. All those specials you saw all those years mm -hmm. that were brilliant, he had those guys. He had Jenny, DiPaolo, and Louis C.K. 
So if each one of them showed up with 15 minutes and Chris showed up with 22 minutes of his own material and webbed off four of those together, I still remember seeing Chris come up to the store on a Monday night and do 30 minutes with fucking Jenny, Louis C.K., and Nick DiPaolo in the audience. You know how strong that is? You know how many comics would do that? Zero. Zero. I want to have a fucking phenomenal special. Lee Syad Incorporated is giving me a million dollars to shoot a special. It is going to be fucking smoking. Uh, guess what? At the end of the special, I'm probably going to die of a heart attack. That's how good the special is going to be. I'm going to go above and fucking beyond for this. I'm going to train the right way. I'm not going to, you know, when, when Netflix called me to do this special, they called in April for me to be ready in June. You know, right. I'm not making excuses. I'm not making any excuses. I'm the one that accepted it. I didn't think about it, you know, and it wasn't an ego thing. It was just that I wanted to do something for Netflix. I figured how long would it take me to write a half hour, and you see what the result is. <laughs> what the fuck are you giggling about? Nobody... <laughs> Why did you like him? What did you do? He did an error. I knew a second ago, but no. <laughs> keep, keep going from where you told it. Cause then... Okay. <laughs> You know that little forehead you got? <laughs> <laughs>